Welcome to the second season of HCS Talks, the Hampton City Schools podcast. Our goal is to educate, inform, and even entertain both our community and listeners beyond. Each episode covers a variety of topics from education and student success to the work of our teachers, support staff, parents, and community partners. We'll also dive into programs, initiatives, and more, offering something valuable and informative for everyone. So we hope you will tune in and continue listening to HCS Talks. Today, I have the opportunity to sit down with Mr. James Bailey, the school division's security supervisor, and Corporal Robert Hipple, who was one of our school resource officer supervisors. I'm looking forward to discussing a very important topic today, one that is always at the forefront of everything we do each and every day, school safety and security. Before we begin, Mr. Bailey and Corporal Hipple, would you please tell the listening audience a little bit about yourselves? Well, uh, my name is James Bailey. I've been with uh, Hampton City Schools now and since the early 2000s, uh, close to 25 years now. Um, I'm a product of Hampton City Schools. I'm a, a, a Hampton Crabber uh, graduate and uh, attended uh, college here locally and, and started out as a, a um, school resource officer in the Hampton Police Department. Um, I did that for a while and was able to um, uh, transition over to the school division. I enjoyed working in the school so much. Uh, and I um, um, received this job under Kathleen Brown, uh, who worked through student services, and I've been doing the security super jo- supervisor job ever ever since, um, working to make sure our kids and, and students and staff are safe. So, Mr. Bill, I didn't realize, or maybe I did, I just forgot that you were a crabber. For some reason, I always thought that you were a warrior. No, no. <laughs> no different crabber. crabber. All yes. right. Did you play any sports? While you were in high school? I, I did. I played uh, football under Coach Mike Smith, and uh, uh, we won a state championship uh, the first year I started playing. And uh, play also played uh, soccer in high school and, and played soccer at uh, Christopher Newport University when I attended college here locally. Well, again, I did not know, I really did not know you actually won a state championship under Mike Smith. Yes, I do. You still have the ring or I jacket do. that went I have my it. ring and my jacket. <laughs> may not fit as easy, but. <laughs> And you played soccer as well? I, I did. Did you yep. all win championships in that? No, Kikatan kind of beat us up uh, every time we played them. Uh, so, But uh, we, we gave it a good run for our money. Had a good group of people that we uh, played with. And then you went on to CNU? I did. I, I uh, attended Christopher Newport University for four years and obtained a criminal justice degree and then um, completed my master's at uh, Troy State University. All right. And I come back home to Hampton City Schools and have not... That's looked right. Anywhere or, in, or looked back since. That's right. Been here locally ever ever since I started my career. Well, we're very fortunate to have you. You said you were a police officer with Hampton Police Department. For yes. How long did you do that? Uh, for uh, I was a police cadet for three years before I went to the police academy and and worked in the police department for close to seven years uh, as a police officer and uh, ultimately a school resource officer. Um, so you were I, one of the first school resource officers we had. I was. I was. I was the, the first school resource officer actually kick it in high school. Outstanding. Corporal Hipple. Yes, I'm uh, Corporal Robert Hipple. I've been with the Hampton Police Division for now 17 years. Had various opportunities, work day shift, night shift, um, investigations, business improvement district. But for the last four years, I've been assigned to the school resource officer unit as a supervisor. I oversee the Chesapeake sector and now the WIF sector. So I get to oversee all the schools and put my input in and help these uh, officers develop all these relationships with the schools. But the impact that you're making is tremendous, and I think you're selling yourself short a little <laughs> because the interactions you have with staff and, and young people, I would say, is really second to none. We're very fortunate to have you working in collaboration with Hampton City Schools and the impact that we're making and being proactive absolutely, and uh, keeping our schools safe. Uh, so you said 17 years all with Hampton? All with Hampton, yes, sir. All with Hampton. Do you Where, did, where are you from? I'm from York. I, I graduated from York High in 97. Well, we won't hold that against you <laughs> because we also know you, you have a connection above and beyond serving as a school resource officer supervisor. You also have a son. I do. Your son attends what school? Uh, the Kikatan High. Kikatan High School. Is he in a particular academy yet? Uh, I, I'm not sure which academy he's on. He has picked one. I think it's uh, one 
the governor's, uh, I believe the governor's one. I'm not. So, is he, what grade is he in? He's ninth grade. Ninth grade. He so, just, he probably may be still figuring some things I, out. I believe so. The freshman year is more exploratory in nature. But That's um, true. with that piece, the governor's, I think that one is the architecture and engineering one. Correct. Uh, perhaps that he might be interested in. But is he playing any sports? He is a soccer player. Does he get that from his father? He does. I played soccer growing up. Did you play in high school? I did. Were you any good? I, I was decent. <laughs> decent. <laughs> is he better than you? He is a lot better than me. All right. So uh, looking forward to uh, what he will do as a student athlete as well as the things he will accomplish in warrior country. So in the police department, uh, you have had various positions? or That's correct. Can you talk a little bit about that? <clears throat> so I've had time to... Uh, Right before I came to school resource officer unit, I was actually assigned to investigations, which is all the detective bureau. So major crimes, robberies, burglaries, and, and things like that. So I was able to, you know, do a lot of background work in there and then work in the road prior to that. So I've, I've, I've been able to see most of all our departments area and how they work. And the schools is kind of one of the last ones I haven't worked in. And this is the one I've enjoyed the most so far. And we enjoy having you as well. So, gentlemen, can you give us an overview of the current safety and security measures in place at our schools? Yeah, I mean, we work every day to, to make sure that our, our students and staff are safe. Um, we have a lot of different systems in place. Um, we uh, start out by um, introducing our Raptor Visitor Management System. So as guests come into the building, we scan uh, um, guests in to ensure that we know who's in the building. Uh, the Raptor system also checks for sex offenders. We want to make sure that our kids are safe, and and um, uh, that system does check for that. Um, we also have our, our response plans uh, that our administrators have. It's an all-hazards approach. It, it gives some uh, guidance when we talk about anything from our lockdowns to our fire drills to earthquake drills. You name it, that response plan covers a lot of different aspects that uh, that will help the administrators at the school. Um, we also have school threat assessment teams. So if there is an incident at a school, the threat assessment team will determine what support they can provide to a child if there's a threat or bullying or uh, different things so that team might be able to, to focus on um, counseling services, uh, things like that. We also do a lot of drills. Uh, again, we do fire drills. Uh, we do lockdown drills a lot. Uh, we conduct our tornado drill in March uh, for a state tornado drill. Uh, so we do a lot of drills out here, you know. Um, uh, tr practice makes perfect in order to, uh, to um, you know, if there's ever the real thing, you, you have to be comfortable in, in, in going through those practice Procedurally, steps. Procedurally, so. it just makes sense to make certain you have those things as part of a regular practice. Now, Mr. Bell, you mentioned the Raptor system when folks first enter the building, but is there something else that they experience when they first enter the building as well? Definitely so. Uh, and before they get into that, we have our, our uh, weapons detection units, of course. Uh, that uh, scan for any type of uh, firearms or, or you know lar large other knives possibly. Uh, we want to make sure that there are no weapons being brought into our school and um, that we make uh, maintain a safe environment there. So, and that's at all of our schools. We have them all the way from our um, pre-K through eight school, um, you know, our, our Moton Early Childhood Center, all the way up to our high school. So, um, and that's on a, a daily basis every morning. And we were sort of. Hampton City Schools was sort of like the pioneers behind this as well. We, we were. We were. Once uh, once we started this process, we had uh, a lot of different school divisions from across the state, from Northern Virginia out to Western Virginia, come out to Hampton City Schools and, and seeing what we were doing with our units and um, with our canines, too, as well, that we're using in the schools. Canines. Talk a little bit about the canines. Certainly, certainly. Um, uh, we ha we have actually purchased a K uh, purchased a narcotics canine for the police department, so they still currently use that uh, canine. Uh, but we are also partnering with uh, American Canine Interdiction. Um, it's a company here. Um, locally and they have different uh, canines that support our, our safety causes. Uh, we conduct routine sweeps at all of our schools for our weapons and, and uh, narcotics so they provide dogs to us uh, to accomplish that mission. Um, they also support us in a lot of our sporting events so at Darling Stadium uh, they're out there supporting that and, and making sure that no, no people are bringing in weapons or anything that they're not supposed to. 
um, basketball games for high schools. Uh, you name it, they're, they're, they're a great partner. Absolutely. And even with the middle school sports, I would imagine we're utilizing them for that as well. We do. We do. So, Corporal Hippo, anything you want to add to that part of it? Because there, there's a specific question I want to ask you following that as well. Yeah. So, we, we partner side by side with them. So, during all the safety drills, the security drills, my SRO that's assigned to that school will help assist and kind of give the police side aspect of it. You know, maybe we should look at it doing it this way, maybe a safer way to get the kids from point A to point B for the safety. So, kind of gives it that second set of eyes coming from a law enforcement background and training to – to the school's admin to kind of help make sure that this is a safe environment for the kids. So it's always sort of kind of like a debriefing moment where you Correct. have the drills and practice and you go back and discuss Correct. What, what, would you, what you can do to make it better or still be just on top of things as it relates to Absolutely. Safety, a safe and nurturing school environment as well. So Corporal Hippo, how do school resource officers and security personnel contribute to keeping our schools safe? So with, with the Hampton... Uh, Police Department, we have a SRO in every high school, which are the four high schools in every middle school. Um, each and every day, the, the officers will walk around the school to make sure that none of the doors are left propped open, any windows are propped open. So while the teachers and kids are in school learning, you know, they don't have to worry about any intruders coming in. They walk around with admin, make sure their building's secure, you know, give them any safety briefings where they may need to, you know, fix this or fix that or, you know, make sure these things are locked. Um, kind of makes it a safe environment. And I think one of the pieces that's uh, critically important to mention is the relationship building that you have with uh, staff and students. So talk a little bit about that as yeah, well. Yeah, so every SRO, you know, um, will develop that relationship with the staff. You know, they can call them day in, day and night. Um, and then it's also with the students. You know, their door's always open. It's a it's a place for the student to come talk to somebody other than admin if there's something going on in, in the school, out in the neighborhood. Or even if they just need, you know, adult figure to talk to, they can come in there and develop that relationship. And then those relationships continue building on years after that person has left the school. So it, so it helps out. So the mentoring aspect, I think, is, is, is uh, very positive as well. And then you mentioned the piece about not just with school. They can talk about things that could be perhaps going on in community as well that may even spill over into the school buildings. So it, it helps in terms of having that ongoing or collaborative relationship and them working alongside the school security officers as well. I've, I've seen, uh, you know, consistently how the school security officers and the school resource officers have a great working relationship all towards that one common goal and ensuring that our schools are safe and nurturing as well. Absolutely. So what role does technology play in, hand, in enhancing school safety, whether it's through security systems, communication tools, or even monitoring software? Um, I think technology is, is very important. It, it's always expanding. It's always getting better. Um, from when I first started here, uh, early 2000s, we were still using VHS tapes to help record camera systems. So we've gotten much better since then. Uh, um, we've ex you know, expanded our camera system uh, um, in the entire division. Uh, updated server so we could add more capacity, more cameras. I mean, they, the cameras do help. Uh, I think it keeps our students and guests honest out here. Um, we utilize panic buttons at all of our schools now. Um, we hope we never have to use those, but they're in place. So if there's an emergency situation and they can't get to a phone, they can simply push a panic button to, to help get support from the police department and our security staff. We, we've certainly have evolved. And you mentioned Miss Kathleen Brown at the beginning. Yes. She was also instrumental in, in giving me an opportunity when I first uh, completed my college courses as well. Uh, very instrumental in student services and the whole safety plans and having them in the buildings. And she went on to become one of our superintendents. And yes, she did. She continues to be a great mentor and, and friend for me as well. So Talk a little bit about the safety plans that exist in the schools as well. Well, uh, all of our, our administrators have an emergency response uh, plan. It's an all-hazard approach. Um, again, they have a, a hard copy as well as a digital copy they can uh, refer back to as a guideline and uh, provide guidance anywhere from you know uh, um, procedures for lockdowns, um, tornado drills. Um, we have uh, radiological issues. That, I mean, there, right. it's a... A whole list of things that they can go through, and the no. teachers also have the uh, emergency procedure guides that they have in the classrooms. Do these systems or tools 
Are they in sync with um, any devices or mechanisms the police department has or just oh. with the school resource officers being employees with us, they have access to it? How does that work? They, they do. Uh, you know, if we have a, a critical incident, uh, we have an MOU, uh, Memorandum of Understanding with the police department. It's a very robust um, um, memorandum of understanding, so it allows the police department to have access to our camera systems if we have to lock down or we're in a critical situation. Then it gives them the added benefit of, of seeing what's going on in the school, uh, um, even in their real-time center that they have at the Hampton Police Department. So um, I don't know if you'll expand on that, Corporal Hibble at all. Yeah, but it, it just helps us, uh, you know, something comes on, one of the supervisors can bring up the cameras immediately, see what's going on, and then give a live feed out to whether it be the SRO at the school or responding SROs. So, you know, it is, it is a critical part that we were able to luckily have access to, and we can get the resources to the appropriate places and any responding uh, officers as well. Absolutely. Even something as simple as the use of the radios, you all, you're directly connected, of course, to the police department, but you're also able to tune in to the school's radios. As Correct. Well. Yeah, we can we can do uh, school transportation. We also have the uh, school radio. So, you know, communication is right there and it's at the right at our fingertips. Absolutely. So can you, I know you spoke about this already, Mr. Bailey, just talk a little bit more about the types of drills conducted to ensure students and staff are prepared for any type of emergency. Certainly. Um, we're required to conduct fire drills every every month. Uh, the first month of school, 20 days of school, we actually have to complete four fire drills. And then we conduct uh, two lockdown drills uh, within the, the first 20 days of school too as well. Um, and then we uh, conduct drills every month. I mean, it's not just a few at the very beginning of the year, and that's what we stop. So we continue every month to complete fire drills to ensure that the kids and, and uh, our students and staff know how to properly exit a building if there is a fire in our building. Um, we also, um, you know, complete multiple lockdown drills throughout the year. So um, if there ever is a critical incident, um, they will know what to do to be able to secure in place either in a classroom or, or properly evacuate if they need to. And um, we do have some severe weather around here. There's a hurricane, I think, floating around right now out in yes. the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So we, we do have severe weather around here from time to time. So we also um, uh, have an optional earthquake drill that the, the administration at the schools are, are uh, able to practice uh, getting under desk. And, and then ultimately in the springtime, we conduct our, our um, tornado drill too as well for the statewide tornado drill. So what road does do the police officers or school resource officers play in these drills so we assist we're right there beside them and when whenever there's a drill we're watching how everything's moving out and making sure that it's probably the safest way for kids to go from point a to point b and we just kind of give our input to the admin and say you know this works this probably needs to instead of going down the b hallway let's go down the a hallway it's a quicker exit you know but they are side by side with admin doing all these drills. So just giving that immediate feedback and the debriefing piece, I think, like we mentioned earlier, are important in terms of uh, us just looking at ways we can further promote and enhance school safety. So how closely do schools work with local law enforcement and first responders when it comes to safety protocols? I mean, we're we're kind of side by side. I mean, every everything that goes on, I mean, we're in touch, we, you know, communication's key, you know, when something's going on with the schools, I let James Bailey know or vice versa. James Bailey gives me a call, lets us know that we're, you know, got this or this going on. Right. And I, I would say just having been here, this is my 30th year. So I've seen the evolution of the school resource officers coming to the school buildings from various positions that I've held. And, you know, just as importantly, when I was a building principal, but I can't say enough about the uh, great partnership we have with the Hampton Police Department and just us always looking at ways we can further promote and enhance school safety, not just with the schools, but in the community as well. So we're very fortunate to have that because I, there are other localities that may not have the relationships that we have in terms of working side by side. So we're very fortunate from that perspective and we continue to benefit from the ongoing collaboration collaboration with the police department from all aspects, and we do appreciate it. So what role do you all think teachers play in ensuring a safe school environment? 
I, I think it's a, a real important role. Uh, um, you know, I always say it takes a village to raise a child. It's the same in the school setting, too, as well. You know, our administration do an, a, an amazing job day in and day out. Uh, we have our school security officers also in our, our secondary schools. But uh, it also takes the, every teacher, every coach out there to, to help monitor the school. Uh, when, when kids are going from classroom to classroom, the, we strongly encourage teachers to step out into the hallways and help monitor. The, the the students and and support that that overall cause you know, you know and making sure that our schools are safe. Excellent. So and and we recognize that it takes everyone. It's not just the administration or school security or school resource officers. It takes everyone to ensure that our schools are safe. If you see something, say something. And if you're looking at ways we can further promote or enhance school safety, then we certainly want to hear from you all as well. So next question, how can parents and community members be involved in supporting school safety? Um, I think the best thing they can do, I, I'm a parent myself, I have two, two um, teenage boys, and uh, just talking with the, those, you know, our kids on a daily basis, um, same thing, <clears throat> if they see something, they can say something, um, if they're being bullied to school, to, to report that, we have excellent counselors and support staff here at the schools, and um the biggest thing is just uh, they're part of that team too as well. It's uh, again, if they know what's going on out in the community. Sometimes things come back into the schools because of community events, and uh, I think if we build those relationships with our students, they feel comfortable enough right. to to be able to go to us and uh, and tell us what's going on. Right. So it 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 is actually a beautiful thing to have you also being a former police officer. So the seamless transition in your working closely with the police department. Can't say enough about that piece as well and just your experiences. I know, Corporal Hippo, you could add to that in terms of parents and community members and how they can be involved, not just in supporting school safety, but safety in the community as a whole. Yeah, it just being another set of eyes and ears and being aware of what their kids are doing on social media because everybody knows that social media, it, it spreads so quickly and knowing what your kids are doing on that phone or on the internet and being able to see that and then bringing it to us to say, Hey, let, just let us know this is going on in the community. It may bleed over into our schools, it may bleed over into our athletic games, you know, or something that, you know, we just need the parents to be involved in their life so they can bring it. And I'm glad you brought up that social media piece. Oftentimes that's where we gather a lot of our information and tips in terms of what we need to do to be proactive and identify a situation before it becomes a serious problem. So monitoring that piece, we know, is another key element in ensuring safety. So are there specific communication channels for parents to report concerns or ask questions about school security? Uh, we, we do. Hampton City Schools maintains a, a safe school hotline. Uh, currently, it's a 727-CALL, C-A-L-L, or 727-2255. Uh, we, we are in the process of transitioning with a, another company uh, that will be in place very shortly uh, um, to allow uh, um, um, a more re a robust uh, uh, means to be able to communicate through um, telephone, text, um, a web address or email, and uh, um, we're finalizing contracts with that right now and should be out shortly. But yes, the, and that number is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and we do receive uh, phone calls from students. And they text that number, or is it just a phone call? Our, our temporary right, uh, number right now is a, a phone call voicemail. Okay. But, but um, with the company that we're moving to um, within the next couple of weeks, I hope uh, we'll have all, all those benefits to it. And we also oftentimes will get information through uh, social media uh, websites that we have through Hampton City Schools. How about with the police department? What can they do from that perspective in terms of reporting information? So they can they can obviously call, you know, either one or SRO directly because his number is pub, uh, published. So he has a work cell phone and he has that available for students, parents or anybody want to call in. Um, and then obviously we have the uh, crime line tip, but there's a crime line part of it. But most of the time it's, it's all the communication. We we make sure that SROs give that number out to any parents or anybody that needs to keep in communication with them. They can contact them at any time. Excellent. So, gentlemen, are there any upcoming changes or enhancements parents and students should be aware of? 
Um, we, we continue to make improvements. Um, we're getting ready to do introduce a, a door prop system uh, division-wide, which will allow our administration and security staff and, and law enforcement to know if a door is accidentally propped open um, you know, by a staff member or a student, uh, exterior doors. Um, so that will have a, a, an alerting system to allow us to know which door has been propped open so we can properly secure that. Um, we continue to enhance our, our, you know, our PA systems. Uh, we are also getting ready to introduce an, um, an 800 megahertz radio uh, to all of our administrators. We're finalizing uh, the uh, programming with the city of Hampton representatives that are helping us with that process. But all of our administrators will have a, a, a 800 megahertz Motorola radio that will be able to be used to anywhere in the city. Just, it's, it's, it's very similar to a police radio. They would have access to being able to communicate directly with the police dispatcher, our transportation department, the SROs, um, and that would be uh, very beneficial if we do ever have to leave the property of our schools and reunify off-site. They can carry those radios with them and have uh, communications with police, fire, and other emergency responders and, and school staff. You mentioned transportation, too. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. What would you like parents and students to know about how seriously Hampton City Schools take safety? Well, uh, as a security supervisor, that's our, uh, my uh, main goal, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, um, if we have, And I can tell, by the way, the two of you are constantly checking your devices to make certain things are in order in schools uh, this morning as well. I'm yes, sorry, go no, ahead. That's, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so it's not just during the daytime, like uh, Corporal Hippel said, with social media, it's, it's uh, um, uh, very busy now with uh, with our, our kids in the community. So if there's an event or something that's serious threat or something like that, we're communicating after hours. I mean, we've got that great partnership with the police department where I can pick up the phone at 9 o'clock at night and say, Corporal Hipple, there's there's an incident on social media that I'm getting calls for. Are you able to check on that? And just having that partnership um, is, is very important. So it's a it's a 24 hour, seven day a week. Um, we encourage uh, parents to to call in and support. And if they see anything too as well, it's a partnership with our parents uh, also to make sure that we maintain a safe environment, uh, not only at our school but our school sponsored events off site and, and things like that. So I just appreciate the the uh, the partnership and support that we have with the police department. I echo those sentiments, and I too will pick up the phone from time to time and call Corporal Hipple and constantly calling you to Mr. Bailey and can't say enough about Chief Weidman and the relationship and rapport we have with him as well. Anything else you want to add to that? No, he pretty much, you know, knocked on the, yes, you sir. know. Yes, sir. So any final words of reassurance or advice for families regarding school safety? Um, just to, uh, to continue to be a partnership and have open communication with our, our schools. Parents can call in and, and provide advice or, or if they think they have a recommendation for us. I mean, we're, we're there to partner with, with the entire community uh, because the school is obviously a part of the community. And um, it, it takes everyone to make sure that we have a safe environment in our schools. Corporal Hippel? Yeah, pretty much just pretty much to not to repeat everything he right. says, but just keep an open relationship with my SROs. You know, any advice we can take, we're going to take it. Even if we already know it, we're going to, you know, still build on that and make sure we have a beautiful relationship. And just to add on to what you said, Corporal Ripple, I think it's important as well for them, the families and community members to establish a good relationship and rapport with the police department so that they are feeling comfortable sharing things or insight or ways we can further enhance safety in our schools and community as a whole. Uh, contrary to what people think, we, we recognize that uh, our core business is teaching and learning here in, in Hampton City Schools, but even above that is safety, and we have to make certain we prioritize that. If, if young people and staff don't feel safe in schools, then it adversely impacts their ability to learn. So I can't say enough about how important it is and, and how important we put safe, how important it is for us to constantly look at things we put in place in terms of safety measures and to continuously be proactive and looking for ways we can further enhance safety in the buildings. But, but we can't do that without that partnership we have with the police department and working with uh, Mr. Bailey and the school security officers as well. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you for working to ensure we maintain safe and nurturing environments, and we look forward to this continued beautiful partnership we have with you as well. 
So thank you, Mr. Bailey and Corporal Hipple, for being here today and discussing the importance of school safety and security. I am confident our listeners have gained valuable insights from both of you today. And to our listeners, education is the most powerful weapon we have to transform the world. As one community, one transformation, we remain dedicated to ensuring academic excellence for every child, every day, whatever it takes. We will see you next week. Listen to learn more about Hampton City Schools. New episodes of HCS Talks drop on Thursdays. Subscribe and listen to HCS Talks. HCS Talks is a Hampton City Schools production.